Hi everyone, it's Carla from Casey Creates. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to do a little haul video. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. I've got a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but they all pertain to um, crafting. And some of it is some really pretty lace trim and um, then just some hardware and gadgets and paper items. I do have another haul video of sari fabrics and trims and I'm excited to show you what I've collected over the last few weeks in that area. Um, but for now, um, let's. I guess I'll start with the paper items since they're right here. I, di I discovered, shouldn't say discovered, I have been passing this antique shop for years and the days that I try to stop by, they have odd hours. And so I've never gotten in there after all this time, but yesterday I did. And look what I found, some really fun antique books. And this one is a cookbook. It's a season's best dishes. <laughs> what is that? Oh, for two, four, or six. I'm assuming it serves two, four, or six. I have to be honest, I could not stay in that store very long. It was 90 something degrees and they had no AC, just big fans blowing. So this one is really, really old. I spray these with Lysol, but looks like I'm going to wipe it down a little bit too with a, a Clorox wipe. I'm not afraid to touch it right now though because I mean it's probably just been in somebody's box in the garage or attic somewhere and got real grubby. I thought when I picked this one up there was a date. I'm sure there was. Um, okay so here it says 11 1949 to 12 41 49 I'm assuming that's 1949 anyway I love these old vintage cookbooks and the way they take photos of the food it just looks so oh my goodness that says banana nut salad mm, not sure about that <laughs> but like look at this that's so funny to me that chicken with the oranges and the if you can't tell, those are little star cutout shapes of jello. And then it's garnished with a big a bunch of celery leaves. So, you know, they, they've come to such sophisticated ways of garnishing food now. That was probably their sophisticated way of garnishing in 1949. So I like it. It's very retro. I didn't realize how dirty this is Ugh. even though it's sprayed um you know me germaphobe anyway this one is a singing book and it says let's sing community song book for schools clubs churches homes camp meet camp meetings and banquets can't you imagine them all around the piano or the guitar and everybody chiming in i purchased it personally for going in journals because I love the small print and the small music notes but you know very traditional songs my country tis of thee which is America so oh this is little Annie Rooney oh I thought it was going to say Andy Rooney oh wait let's see what year this one is it is I purchased it because I know I saw the year. Oh, there it is. 1933 is the copyright. So that was before my mom was born by five or six years. So this is quite old. But this one was fun just because you could go through Boom's. I don't even know how to say that. Fun is silly. Funisula. <laughs> um, I guess that's some kind of an Italian song, maybe. The Man on the Flying Trapeze. That sounds familiar. Oh. Some of these are different language. Well, Dixieland. We do know that one. 
Marilyn, my Marilyn, don't know that. Humpty Dumpty, Jack and Jill, Little Jack Horner. So some of these are nursery rhymes. The Three Blind Mice, Round the Mulberry Bush. For he's a jolly good fellow. Okay, so I can't you picture people singing around just belting these songs out or sitting around, I should say. The Last Rose of Summer. Oh, let's not think about that. We still have a few weeks to enjoy. Oh, the Lord's Prayer. That's kind of nice. They mix spiritual songs in with, um, you know, traditional folk type songs. Oh, come all ye faithful. Well, there's all kinds of books, songs in here. That's actually really neat. Jesus, lover of my soul. It came upon a midnight clear, which is, I believe, a Christmas song. Yes. Right there, Xmas song. Sacred hymn. Oh, so there's a little box. Ooh, it's really fragile paper. Check that out. Um, so it can tell you what the tune of the song is or what style. So that's a sacred march. I know this is fascinating to me, probably not to you, but I just wanted to show you how you can use these beautiful already um, aged patina pages in journals and they're really great size and I've decided that just this size is exactly what I would need for my journals um, and I don't need to go buying a whole bunch more use that up and get another one this is um I don't know who Paul walks is is that how you say it Walkus watch I don't know anyway I liked the size of this and because I'm not attached to whatever the music is, it won't be difficult to put it in my journals. So I picked up one of those. These were a dollar each. And Presser's Economy Group. Hmm, don't know what that is. Piano music in sheet form. Is this the back? Oh, <laughs> it's 25 cents. That's the back. No wonder. Stefan's, Stefan Heller. Um, this is just one song. Curious Story. I just, I've always loved music notes. The written music and the, you know, the treble clef and the ledger lines and how it looks and goes up and down and all the stems. It's just a really pretty script, music is. That is to me anyway. Um, so what else? Paper wise. Oh, I picked up some paper stacks this one well I'll show you this one first this was from scrapbook.com and I kept getting an email saying they were having a Christmas in July sale that I wasn't going to purchase anything from but um, this paper stack that I bought from a different website I saw this and I realized this will match that paper stack really well and I do like scrapbook.com their things come really quick um, I oh look they sent me a little freebie that is pretty adventure fill your soul well you know this is right up my alley I love anything woodland forest they're just advertising um, vintage artistry, artistry travel their rub-ons for 49th and market and then they sent this with the little tags you can cut out that was nice thank you scrapbook.com and then these were the cut aparts I bought for Christmas in July um, I don't know it was quite cheap like a dollar and forty cents but I love the um, pine cones and evergreen on the back and then these are the numbers, 25 days of December, and really nice vintage looking images with the nice tan background, which makes it even more vintagey. And then this is just decorative poinsettia sheet and the cut aparts for tags and cards. I like this one because you can list your Christmas list and I do love making Christmas paper bag journals so 
So I know it's a little bit off, but it isn't too early to start thinking what I want to create in the next couple of months. And then I really thought this was pretty. Very vintagey. I love anything with those yellowy brown golden undertones. And then this is the other side of that one, which is even prettier if you ask me. And fall is coming. So maybe those will be a new set of paper bunting flags. And then this one was so fairy to me, just the light, airy looking daisies with the greens and the browns. I'm not rushing summer off, but this is very fall looking to me as well. So I thought those were pretty and definitely a good deal. And then this paper stack I ordered from scrapbook.com and then they sent me a message saying, it was out of stock. So then I quickly ran to a different website. I apologize because I can't remember the name, but they only had one left anyway. Oh no, no, I take that back. I got this one from Amazon, but there were only two. And so I got this one about three days. I ordered it about three days ago, maybe. Anyway, it's called Christmas Spruce. It is still out there in different websites. Um, and it's again got that real home for Christmas kind of country feel to it. And of course a little bit of gingham. I love the background, the black background on here. I don't know why I'm not really into black, but I do love it with floral prints when there's a black background. And that's the back. And I think those are just little evergreen fronds. So you, looks like you get two of each. These are pine cones, just small little pine cones. So I think these will make nice background papers. Very neutral. So they'll go with all kinds of things. Here's another pine cone one with little pine cone fronds. And this is the back, these little dots, nice soft, not too intrusive in colors. And then of course, I love the gingham, the four different options, I think there's two of these, yes, so there's two of these, that's the one, and then this is the back, I really like that, red. And they gave a page of stickers so they all say different things let it snow warm wishes happy holidays Christmas greetings white Christmas we wish you a Merry Christmas believe in the magic of Christmas oh so they're all different sayings but they're very cute I love this one can you see it just big Christmas right there so I think maybe that's all in the way of paper so a lot of my crafting friends like haul videos and I know I love watching them so thanks for hanging out and letting me show you the things I picked up I, I've been doing a lot of happy mail and uh, challenges and discovered I have no note cards and I do not like to make cards. It's just not been, I've been trying um, to, I think I put so much energy into my journals that when it's time to actually send the journal or the project, I just want to write something on a piece of paper. But I did grab these um, because they were really good discount. I think they were like a dollar and 75 cents and the botanicals are really pretty. So that little note card will have to suffice for my cards. <laughs> what else? So then um, I have this botanical journal and various kind of journal in the making. And I wanted some applique 
that was leaves and I found some. I got this on Amazon. I think I just put embroidered applique leaves and this came up. And I do think you could find this at AliExpress or Wish, but I wanted it to come fairly quickly. It still wasn't extremely expensive, but isn't that pretty? I'm just going to put snippets of it um, throughout the journal or maybe make it the prominent part of the cover. But it's a very nice, sturdy kind of embroidery. And then I got this one. I wanted the colors to be softer. I mean, they sell these in bright red and purple. And, and I actually haven't opened this yet. So, oh, they're generous. So one, two, three. Those are beautiful. I love these. So, of course, these can be cut apart into pieces. I'm getting it in frame. They're, they're, they're three-dimensional, so they do have some layering. So this one is a bigger one, and then these are two smaller ones. Oh, nice. So I got those from Amazon. And then, was I telling you? No, I don't. Yeah, I think I was telling you about the antique shop. That I pass and um, never could catch the the right hours for getting in there oh but the lady in there was so sweet um, and her, apparently her husband they have a schnauzer or had a schnauzer and pepper would take a picture with any customer that wanted and they have all of the pictures with pepper and the customers plastered all over the wall and it's adorable but he passed away five years ago and she is still running their store all by herself and she's got to be 80 if not older but i enjoyed meeting her and visiting with her and i did find some beautiful tatted pieces because now when i go in i look specifically for things that i think are unique and i've never seen um a piece like this before and it was half off it was literally i think two dollars and fifty cents which i just couldn't pass up because I just love tatting and that is so gorgeous to me. I'm not sure if this is like a little cocktail napkin or tray napkin, but it's just beautiful. I will forever be an admirer of tatting. And then one lady, which is just to me a God thing again, when little things like this just brighten my day, she had a basket and it said fill a bag for a dollar and it was just trims and I didn't want to be greedy so I just filled two bags but look at all of the wonderful things that were in that bag this little Battenberg lace doily says home sweet home and then it was just loaded with these trims there's this one look at that so I decided I wouldn't go crazy and get, you know, all of it. But I am going to go back tomorrow. And if there's still some there, I'll fill up another couple of bags. Because they make perfect trim for the edges of vintage journals. And they make great happy mail. You can't really see this one very well. I should have ironed it. But it's just a long, streaming strip of tatting. And so is this one. And so I was able to just load my bag with this trim. Look at this one. So pretty these are. Look at this one. And so you're kind of looking at these with me um, because yesterday when I was putting them in the bag, I was like, I don't know, maybe just like, oh, I need to hurry. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like I need to hurry. Um, but I didn't really look at them in detail but I will press these out really well and um, that way I'll be able to see the design a little better this was in there I'm, I'm not thinking this is vintage at all but I do have some of this in cream 
I just thought it was unique. This is just more of the other one. This is a tiny little doily. Isn't that cute? It's so delicate. And then there is this one. More of this. There was lots of this, but I love doing... I love this really uh, thin flat lace. And then this is a tiny little strip of tatting. And I tried not to overpack it. I, I'm always afraid of looking greedy. I didn't want to look greedy, but um, I could have packed more in. She didn't seem to mind. I'm a little overly conscious sometimes. So that was the first bag. And then I won't show you all of these, but there's... A really big piece in here can you see this this one is wired together because it reminds me of like maybe pillowcase trim I think I've seen this on old vintage pillowcases but it's made with a really nice cotton and this one is tucked in there I think this one's really really old too can you see that and another long one not sure i'm getting that there we go this is another batten oh there's two battenberg lace ones aren't those cute so tiny i love this one i think this is a double layer of that tatted piece and then i was going to show you this one because this was very generous it's kind of a zigzag shape all the way down and maybe a trim for a bed linen or something but it's really long generous piece and this was so delicate and pretty i love this one see that and this one I love this one. It's so pretty. Got these little designs on the end here. And I think this is the last one from that bag. Which is again just another really delicate one. So I was thrilled with that find. And I'm also thrilled with the fact that I've been having enough time to actually use these trims. And when you see your stash start to dwindle, it's a good sign. It means I'm using it. Now there's another thrift store that I think I mentioned is literally within walking distance of my house. And I've been there once, but they also have kind of odd hours. So, excuse me, I'm just going to take a drink. And, um, but I got in on their hours this week, earlier in the week maybe. I found these beads. They had a whole craft section that was 50% off. So, these pretty little wooden beads. What does that say? 20 cents? 50. I literally think that says 20 cents. Wow. And then I saw these little amber colored beads. But these were what I thought were really fun, were these unopened packages of really narrow rickrack. And since they were 50 cents, I got them for a quarter each. And they had other colors, but I thought I'll just grab the colors I know I'll use, which are the blues. And then I like that soft yellow. Whoops. Um, and the packaging, the prices on the packages are so low that I'm assuming these are really old. Um, maybe the prices aren't on these. But anyway, oh yeah, there's one. See? 45 cents. So whenever these were made, it certainly is more than 45 cents now. But I love the tiny little rickrack. And this is some seam binding, and it's really old vintage seam binding. So 
it's a nice blue it's nice to get it in the actual color and if you can see see it's really the nice sturdy rayon this is a lavender one yeah it says 100 percent rayon so i love that i'm like be able to use that in my fairy journal especially that color and then i found this kind of fringy craft trim and it's from joann's but i think it's from joann's a long time ago so i found that um i'm almost done if you're still hanging in there with me i think this oh and this was from um the thrift store a bag of corks I'm going to use these because I'm making ceramic salt and pepper shakers and I can cut these down to fit. I don't know any other cork um, projects. I'm sure there's tons of them on Pinterest, but I can share those with my students. And then these really pretty little picture frames. They're actually quite lightweight. I don't know what they're made out of. Maybe resin. But I'm sharing these with my sister because she makes the most gorgeous ornaments at Christmas time. They're almost like little window boxes. I'm going to tell you her Etsy page. It's called the Putzy Potter. P-U-T-Z-Y Potter. She does such beautiful work. And I don't think she gets enough recognition or her page just doesn't, you know, show up when people go there. So I'll just give her a little shout out because that's what we do for each other. It's the Putzy Potter, P-U-T-Z-Y. And she does these really cool herb um, stakes that you can put in your herb garden. She does these really pretty um, uh, napkin rings that you can actually put the fresh herbs in the napkin ring anyway that's my sister this one is a really pretty ecru satin ribbon and then I bought these at Hobby Lobby and they're actually these are actual earrings already I can't remember how much they were but they were really cheap like two dollars very pretty and then these you can put on ear earring hooks and so I picked up those. Um, a brush, because I've started brushing the back of my scrapbook paper with tea. With tea. I'll show you in another video that I'll have coming up soon. Um, I'm going to be doing journal signatures. And I want to use the uh, one-sided scrapbook paper. But the other side of it is white. So I just take a wide brush and brush it with tea and that helps give it a little less shocking white color and these brushes were just on sale so the second one I've been using those were really good cheap uh, good price these whenever Tim Holtz pieces are on 30% or 40% off I go ahead and grab them and I've never seen these are these not the sweetest thing they're the tiniest little safety pins and I just ended up spilling them and mixing them all together by accident, but I'll put those back in later. They're that pewter color. Kind of black to pewter. Anyway, I thought those were really fun and always good to get when they're marked down. And then so many of the crafting geniuses here on YouTube um, send me the most adorable little tiny things so I thought I'm gonna get one of these tiny little punches and create tags oh this one needs snipping I put my little scissors anyway it won't matter cuz I'm gonna throw the wrapping away anyway They have these adorable little punches. Look at this. Wouldn't that be cute to just, you know, decorate a card 
Let's see. Maybe it's going to be trickier than I thought. Ooh, it didn't punch very easily. Let's try it one more time. I think I have to pound it, and I'm afraid to pound it because I don't want my camera to fall. You guys, this little punch is not punching through card. Maybe it's not made for card stuff. But uh, I'm going to try it on some paper. See if maybe it will work on here. Yeah, it's just not strong enough for cardstock, but that's okay. I can still make it work for my idea. And it's super cute little butterfly. Anyway, that is my haul. I don't think I have anything else to show you, but I really did enjoy visiting with you. I hope you'll come back again and see what I'm doing in the way of crafting over this weekend. I should probably put up another video before the weekend is over. And if you put up a video, I will look forward to seeing it. I always enjoy watching all of you, and I learn a lot from many of you. And feel like we're just having a little crafty visit. So thanks for joining me. I hope you stay healthy and safe and have a great weekend. And I'll see you back again soon. Bye.